Welcome to FFC Top 3, a show where we, your FFC hosts, count things down from 3 to number 1. Thank you for joining us this week. If you have a suggestion for Top 3, you know where to drop the notes. Twitter, Discord, or at focusfirechat at gmail.com. This week, Blue and I, because it is the two of us, just the two of us, Mm -hmm. are going to discuss our top three favorite memories or traditions, like family memories or family traditions. So be ready for some embarrassing stories on my end. I don't know what Blue's got up his sleeve, but it's going to be... It's going to be fuel for some of you, I'm sure. Don't don't come at me, bro. Blue, you want to start us? Yeah. So my number three is actually uh, when I was growing up, and I've mentioned this uh, once, I think once or twice, uh, but one of my things growing up was we'd always take a week every year and go to a cabin out in Estes Park. uh, Mm -hmm. And so for those of you who don't know, Estes Park is like right in the backyard of the Rocky Mountains. Like it's literally like Rocky Mountain National Park is basically right there. Um, And so we just always would have like a week growing up, we would be out there, you know, doing stuff in the National Park, hiking all around that area. Um, And just growing up, that was just a huge, like, I don't know, like it just, it just really kind of secured in my brain the importance of being out and nature and stuff like that. And just the, I guess the, the powerful ability of nature just to kind of help relax and like, and then also just, I don't know, it just, it really opens your eyes being out in the middle of just unfiltered natural events. Um, I just remember a lot of like, you know, snowstorms or just storms or, you know, just like different, different stuff just going on. Um, and just being able to see it without any, I don't know, any filter, I guess, would really be the easiest way to say it. And Lens I don't think, between you and it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's I think that's sadly missing in a lot of people's kind of worlds today because of the, the growing reliance on technology. Um and I it's not necessarily a hundred percent negative because, you know, there's there's definitely a thing to be said about the sharing of information and the quickness of which the information, you know, and the protection that that has that has given people. But right. um at the same time, it also does disconnect people from kind of the what I think the wonder of the natural world does provide. But yeah, so growing up, that was that was just one of the huge things that you know we did as a family pretty much every year. Uh, In the was, taffy shop, oh, the oh taffy yeah, the saltwater shop is taffy. Amazing. Actually, you know what? Mm-hmm. If you, if anyone out there even ever has a chance, I mean, just take like if you ever have a chance to visit us as park. I mean, I would I would strongly mm-hmm. recommend it. But like Fair seriously. Warning. Yeah, fair warning, you're going to lose a lot of money because you're going to buy a lot of stuff. But it's, it's also busy during the oh, summer. It is so busy, but it's so like I was just going to say, like, give give yourself a, if you do visit, give yourself a day or two to seriously just walk around the, the air, the town, like mm-hmm. the down. I think it's the downtown area. I think technically is the yep. thing, but it's it's um uh, the best. The best thing. Sites there. Yeah, there, it's it's like a very it's a very small town feel. Uh, it's a very it reminds me a lot of um, the hot springs in Arkansas. It's mm-hmm. sort of like a really like it's just it's they've managed to keep that small town feel very very strong, and it's very there's it's a very cozy area. It feels like, but at the same time, it still has, or at least when we were there, it still has like a lot of the the luxuries of like. It's not like a city, but it's not a you know, it's not like a one stop shop town either. Oh but. no, I mean, there's like a Dylan's there, but um, they also have the hotel that Stephen King based The yes. Shining off of is there, which is really cool. And there's like is it in Estes Park? I thought it was. It is. Not- is it in Estes, not shining, like Estes, uh, um No, because it was. Uh, uh, it's one of his books. Let me. It's not look the Shining. It up. You just yeah. You said that, and I'm now I'm blanking on it. And Estes the, Park, Stephen King. Let's I see here. Too. Yeah, it is The Shining. The Muse for Stephen King's The Shining, a colonial revival landmark built by an interpreter. Yeah, it's it's up there. And there's actual like cock- there's a cocktail place you can go to if you're not staying there. Um, yeah, really good cocktail really... bar that does prohibition style cocktails that are themed <laughs> around. Everything. So, but yeah, no, I mean, there's there's just the Stanley, and, and then and then the called. the Stanley. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. But like, yeah, if anyone is looking for like a, just a really peaceful place to go for a vacation, and it's not you know you're able to do it, I would really recommend if you haven't been to Estes Park to definitely check it mm-hmm. out. 
the other thing that I mean, he mentioned Rocky Mountain National Park. Yeah. If you go, there's a very not a small window necessarily, but a very particular window that you have to be there if you're going to want to go all the way up to the um, main observatory area, which is at, oh yes, I remember which fourteen thousand. Yeah, oh, no, 13. and it's worth it. Like, yes, it is. It is so worth it. Summertime, early fall late 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 spring like it almost has to be summertime because a lot of those roads up there is they get, they're closed off <laughs> there's a good reason they get no. closed off even Lots driving of up even driving up in the summer you you, you, mm-hmm. you i remember sometimes getting like going through like 10 foot 15 foot like 20 foot and i mean just massive drifts because yeah. they, they'll carve them out right and it's just yeah. oh my gosh yeah the, it, super, the national park is just oh so great. And there's lots of different hiking trails and lakes and all sorts of different things. It's one of Julie's and my favorite places to go to when we kind of take a weekend vacation because we're not too far from there now, which is nice. But my number three is actually a bit of a funny. Um, my family, I've always been really, really interested in music, love music, love singers, love listening to singers, love different types of singers. I got into American Idol when American Idol came out. And if anybody remembers this particular gentleman who went on American Idol um, and sang She Bangs by Ricky Martin and was very out of tune, um, became an instant hit because, you know, people love memes. And he was like a meme for that show for so long. Anyway, my family was very <laughs> cruel to me multiple Christmases in a row. And for about six years, it was a joke that they would get me the same CD by Mr. William Hung for Christmas in my stocking every year. I tried to throw the thing away. Finally, at year six, I ended up breaking the stupid CD because I'm like, I, I am done with this joke. Stop it. So bad. So bad. But yeah, that's my number three. It's it's such a like they love giving me, and that's one of the nice things about family is they can give you, and it becomes a funny memory. But man, was I was so mad year after year getting that in my stocking. Oh my goodness! But blue, <laughs> please tell me your family wasn't that cruel to you. Uh, so my number two is, <laughs> um. No, actually, my my number two is uh, so every go, growing up, uh, I grew up on a ranch, so mm-hmm. horses were kind of an everyday like, that was just part of life. Uh, and one of the things that we'd always do, we'd always go on trail rides. Like that was big. Like just every weekend, we were probably riding somewhere. But one of the things that we always did was, as part of, uh, and growing up in Texas, there's a lot of like the Fort Worth stock show, um, the the Austin stock show. Like there's a lot of different stock shows, which it's basically a giant showing of all the the livestock uh, in the area for the purposes of selling them. Uh, it's a huge thing. And one of the one of the things that we'd also often do is we would get on a trail ride that would ride, excuse me, about 120 150 miles. Um, over the course of, uh, I think it was like five days or six days, we'd start in a small town and ride down to Austin. And the entire point of it was really to help raise like awareness of what was going on. And then also just as an excuse for everyone to kind of get together for a week. Um, but that was one of the things that we did growing up. Uh, and it was just, it's just always been something that I've just always had there in my experience and have always looked back fondly on uh, just just because for a host of reasons. Um, But yeah, so that was like a yearly thing. I think we started doing that. I want to say we started doing that when I was around like sixth or seventh grade all the way Mm -hmm. up until I graduated high school pretty much. Uh, And that was just, uh, like I said, it was every, every year we, we would get, in the get everybody loaded up and then for about a week or so we were just out on the roads just on horses just riding how, back and forth how long a day did you ride because that i mean we get up i've about, ridden horses you get kind of a weird gait after riding horses if you're not used to it <laughs> if you're not used to it yeah uh we would uh usually uh for the most part you would usually wake up about we most of us would wake up about five or six uh get everything ready we probably ride out around usually seven or eight and then we'd get done with the day's ride at about i want to say usually five or six that after that evening uh 
ideally you want to still have, you still wanted to have enough time uh, to get uh, everything set up for camp and mm-hmm. everything. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was usually, I mean, it was usually 10, 12 hour a day, uh, with, I mean, we, we'd stop, you know, obviously you stop for lunch and stuff like that, but right. I mean, and it was, well, and I mean, the other thing is, is like, we also had a, I think we had 30 wagons at the, at the height of it. Um, right. So there was, there was like, you know, for, for the really younger kids, um, if they weren't if they weren't up to riding all day, which a lot of them weren't, I mean, for exactly what you're saying, it's, 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 it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, there was, there were wagons that a lot of families had that they had set up the back. I mean, and wagons like these wagons are just like crazy. Uh, but they had them set up so that the kids could like play in the back and stuff like that. Like they had board games and cards and, you know, different, different activities for the kids to just kind of entertain themselves because, the other thing is, is like, uh, you know, a little kid's not going to, they're not going to sit still. Like, that's just not right. them. I, I just have a hard time seeing you as a cowboy. I never said I was a cowboy. I rode horses well, and I trained them. That's, right. That just screams like old I didn't West have cows. I had horses. Of, that's fine. It's still, <laughs> still, still no. cowboy in my mind. Well, and it's it's, really it was weird. funny because like one of the longstanding jokes with our family is the fact that other than the first year that we went on that I never got to ride my horse um, during the entire week while we were doing stuff because why is that? They, well, because what turned out is everyone figured out after the first year that I was there that I was willing to put up with any horse and I was really good at breaking horses as uh, far as like getting them to behave. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty much nonstop me trading other people and I never got to ride my horse that is because a he was so well trained that he just would follow with everybody right Um, and so like it was constantly like like the group that we rode with was constantly giving my mom grief about you know what horse is he on now i have no idea where is he i have no idea is he alive i have no idea like it was just like because i mean most of the horses were pretty well behaved but i was also like i also did farrier uh, work mm-hmm. so if we had issues there you know i had all the gear to put out like so it was it was a lot of you know last minute emergencies fixing stuff which now that i think about it is not very different from what i do now just i do it with technology now nice gosh i mean i just can't even imagine being on a horse that long we had miniatures mainly but we did have a few well, yeah. quarter horses that we had ride around on but yeah well in my my horse at the time who he, well this is the horse who actually just recently passed away uh mm-hmm. he uh we had him when he was born so he was born at our ranch in in mckinney and i started training him like immediately and so by the time he was ready to go, he was a uh, Tennessee Walker mix with like a thoroughbred. So he had, he was a huge horse, um, but he also thought he was like a Chihuahua lap dog. Like he was just hilarious. Um, nice. But he was like he was the one that you could like completely control via your knees. Like you didn't have to have a bridle because we had trained oh, him I that love way. Those. Oh, um, well, because we we raised him. Ride. Yeah, we raised him to be trail riding or like we right. didn't do we didn't do show or anything like that with him. We were it was just 100% trail riding. So that's one of the big things is like you, mm-hmm. you need your hands when you're doing stuff. So like everyone who then rode him, they wouldn't get off him. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it, was, it was I just remember one like I think it was like one of the ones one of the later rides. I remember we were having I was having to fit I fit, I tame calm down this one lady's arabian who like arabians are they're just skittish like there's just by nature they're just very skittish horses and hers was not doing very well and i remember (laughs) riding past my uh my mom and this other a friend of ours and he was giving her grief he's like god and that kid just doesn't know how to put his tack on blah 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 because like the the saddle was Mm -hmm, all just mm -hmm. jacked up and it oh, was because no. I had literally, I had literally jumped from my horse to this horse because this horse was throw, uh, thrown this other lady off. So I had, uh-huh. had literally not even touched the ground. I had gotten onto this horse. <laughs> my mom's like, for the record, that's not his horse. I don't even know whose horse that is. 
Dang. So and he's like, oh, just jumping okay. on saving this random yeah, person. He's like, oh, okay, never mind. She's like, I don't Jeez. know where his horse is. Oh gosh, man, makes me miss the farm a little bit, just a little bit. We were a working farm, so not as much of um, having horses and being able to enjoy them as much as moving yeah. pipe and stuff like that. Yeah, we we but... had we helped out a couple. Like we lived down the street from a couple cattle farms, so we we definitely had our own mm-hmm. moments of like, oh well, we gotta go help them, you know, run mm-hmm. through stuff. Yeah. So kind of a little bit along your point, you were talking about for year number two with the the writing and stuff like that. Mine has to do with being in Kansas, growing up in Kansas, and the fact that Kansas is flat and doesn't get snow very often. It's totally got small mole holes. On the East Coast, or on the East Coast, on on the the East east side of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, East Coast. No, um... No, I grew up in southwest Kansas, which is about as flat as you can possibly get. And it's it was terrible. But um, my one of my most vivid memories, one of my most early vivid memories, was we had snow, pretty decent amount of snow come down when I was around four or five years old. And you don't go sledding in Kansas because there's no hills. <laughs> um I've still to this day have never officially gone sledding and I am 31 now. No, 32. I'm 32 now. Math is hard. But uh yeah, my grandpa decided he was going to take the hood off of this old junk car that he was working <laughs> on. Chain it to a four-wheeler. <laughs> this is <laughs> and and he owned the lot next to his house. So he basically had me and my mother on this car hood, hanging on for dear life, dragging us around this lot. And he went around a corner and he's done this to me like multiple times, not just on the sledding. Like I used to go wakeboarding at the lake and stuff like that. And he'd do this to me every freaking time because he thinks it's hilarious. And I I never really got hurt, but I, uh, I went <laughs> flying <laughs> off into head first into a drift because he went too fast around a corner, four years old, feet sticking out and everything. They have pictures. I am not sharing them with anybody. You could forget asking right now. But it was great. It was great. The but thing yeah, that is, is you started saying that and the first, the only thought I have is like, I bet you got a lot of snow in your face from the treads of the four wheeler. Uh, actually, no, he had it probably about like 10 feet behind okay, like he okay, put okay. a long long chain you can tell on it. That it wasn't a- i might have done this before because that was uh-huh. my first i'm like yeah don't put it that close because you're gonna get a oh, m- yeah. face full of mud because we did that in mud because texas mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't snow it i mean it ices sometimes but it rains yeah. and when it rains that's when you <laughs> you don't go to field unless you want to see some people do some really dumb stuff oh yeah oh yeah god but yeah that was a fun time one of my earliest memories is being headfirst in a freaking snowdrift. Now I live in a state where it snows a lot more often. But that brings us to our number one's blue. And what's your number uh, one? My number one is actually like, or, so it's it's been interesting growing up. It's um, for those who, who aren't married and don't have kids. It's probably kind of a foreign concept. But the concept of holiday splitting is mm. really kind of, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Like it's just, to me, it's just really fascinating. Um, but like, so our holiday schedule has been kind of a, has started, has begun a tradition (laughs) and the nice thing, I guess the nice thing, I don't know if this is a nice thing, but the, whatever the benefit to it is because we're the oldest, both, both my wife and myself are the oldest of our, of our generation, our family. And we get, we apparently have set the trend for everyone else. (laughs) So everyone else's holiday schedules apparently are now like sinking to ours because basically what we do is uh, every year we'll do either Thanksgiving or Christmas, right? Those are the two major holidays. Uh, Mm -hmm. One one year we'll be down in Texas uh, for Thanksgiving and then we'll be here in Kansas for Christmas. And then the the following year we flip flop it just so that every every family, you know, obviously gets fair treatment, mostly also because with the little one. that becomes very prime real estate for grandparents. Uh, so that's a very contentious territorial dispute that I don't understand nor want to understand. Uh, mm-hmm. So we, I just know that it has to be 50-50 or someone gets crucified and I don't want to be that person. So we do that. Um, <laughs> but like 
I learned last year that my sister-in-law, when they got married, they basically told my wife, oh, well, what is your holiday, like, what's your holiday schedule? Because we're going to coordinate with yours and that they're going to... So basically what it translates into is, like, for my wife's family... <laughs> When we're not in the state for their holiday, they have none of their kids. Like oh, really? every, everyone has synced it up to the point that they're That's all so gone weird. because they're like, well, we want to be at the, we want to be with, with all the you little guys ones. because yeah. if we don't, if you don't, then it's going to be like constantly flip flopping. Like we'll always mm-hmm. miss each other. But, but I was just like sitting there the other day thinking about that. I'm like, huh. So we inadvertently <laughs> destroyed 50% of the holidays for this family because... Not destroyed, just just made it more difficult, <laughs> I guess. Chat. Just set the kids in the middle of the room and have the grandparents have a battle royale for snuggling rights. Oh, uh, no, gosh. <laughs> battle royale. See, I don't want to do that because I really like my wife's parents and I don't want to see them hurt. And I know my, fa- I know my family. <laughs> they don't pull punches. Man. But yeah, yeah. so I, I know that's not like really a tra- well, yeah. it's it's a tradition, it but it's tradition. not like it's not like the normal. Co- it's just it, to me, it just cracks me up. Like the the minor things that just can like create random of just immense amounts of drama and families are just like to me, it's just like why. But then at sometimes it's also really interesting. Yeah, it is. Mine has to do with um kind of the family holiday tradition too, but. My family was all in the same town um, on both sides of my, my mom and my dad's side were all in the same town. So we didn't actually have to travel very far because the town was only a square mile. So you could walk to the holiday if you wanted to. But um, my favorite memory having to do with that is the fact that my dad's side of the family all are card players. All of them play cards and very Catholic Um so what we would do is we'd have pitch tournaments. And I don't know if you know how to play pitch, but um, it is kind of cutthroat. I was about to say, let the because, blood flow. <laughs> um, it's not spoons. We never drew blood. We never played oh, spoons. Okay. spoons. Spoons, you will draw blood. If you have yes. a family gathering with oh, made that Yeah, spoons is, spoons is terrible. But pitch we played and we would have a high table and a low table and you partner up and you have to bid and you work with your partner. And so you you learn a lot about your aunts and uncles when you play with them and against them and how um, how they don't really care sometimes to like kind of destroy you as a seven year old. But, you know, it (laughs) happens. They're like, you know what? You know what? You're getting a little big (laughs) for those. (laughs) But no, it was good. We played every Christmas and every Thanksgiving. There would be a whole day's worth where a lot of my aunts and uncles and on my dad's side. Um, while they were all still alive, there were 13 aunts and uncles on my dad's side. We're down to about seven now because of, um, age and other mishaps that have happened. But I have a lot of cousins on my dad's side of the family and we would all play pitch. And sometimes we'd have two tables going, sometimes three. And then my, my aunt and my grandmother would always make, uh, puppy chow and checks mix <laughs> and have like just crudite out and stuff like that. And we, that's what we would eat. It wouldn't be like a Christmas meal or a Thanksgiving meal at that point. It would just be all these snacks and playing cards. And that was our, a lot of my holidays were spent that way. But learning how to play cards is definitely something that kind of transitioned to my adult life in a very different way. Cause now I play video games instead, but they always encourage that kind of thing, which was nice. But it's kind of, I, I feel like we did a short one, but we really didn't because we had lots of fun conversation about mm-hmm. horses and cards and holidays. But uh, that's it for top three this week, guys. Um, next week, I want to actually do something related back to Destiny a little bit more. I want to do your top three legendary or exotic items in Destiny. And this could be D1 or D2, any point in time. Your favorite exotics or legendaries, top three, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but that's it. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch you next time. And remember, everybody likes a list.